Hi, Wenxin. I want to build an app that uses AI with Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG, but I have some security concerns. What are they? Well, one, my AI app should not have full access to my database. And two, my AI should never see any user IDs. Let me show you some of my code. Welcome to the show, Wenxin. What do you do here at Google? Hello, everyone. I'm Wenxin Du, and I'm a software engineer on the AI and database integration team under Google Cloud. My work focuses on helping developers to build generative AI products that work with databases. AI and databases, huh? You're probably quite busy. Yes. Companies and developers across all industries are trying to build generative AI with RAG into their software. Right. And let's say I want to build a chatbot that can look up a user's information, uh, like flights. I want to build it in Cloud Run, so it's serverless and Google manages the infrastructure for me. I would use Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG, for that, right? Yes. RAG lets the AI query your data sources so it can look up a user's upcoming flights or buy a ticket for the user. For example, you could ask the chatbot, list the tickets I have booked. You would want it to respond with something like this. The AI itself doesn't know users' information, but it can look them up in our databases. But I've heard that can be dangerous. Well, we don't want the user to be able to ask the LLM for another user's flight. For example, if I'm asking the chatbot, list the tickets booked by Martin, it should respond with something like this. Sorry, I don't have that information available. It should not show me your flights. And how can I implement that? Because I keep reading about people jailbreaking large language models by asking specially engineered prompts. Uh, it seems hard to defend against that. We can prevent problems by keeping each user isolated. Each user should have their own AI agent, their own tools for accessing the database, and their own slice of the database with only data about them. So the idea is that if each user has their own slice of the application, there will be no crosstalk between users. Uh, how can we accomplish that? We can do three things. First, we can add an API on top of the database. That way, the LLM will not have direct access to the data. Second, each tool function should authenticate the user. Third, we can orchestrate the database API and the LLM so that the LLM can view user IDs. <laughs> I've heard that all software problems can be solved by adding a layer of indirection. That's what you're doing here? That's right. In the RAG architecture, we call that an orchestration layer. The app would ask the LLM which API to use, call the API, then ask the LLM to dress up the reply in nice, readable human language. That makes sense. Uh, but the details are still a little fuzzy for me. Uh, could you walk us through an example? Sure. Here are the system components. First, the user logs in. This could be done with Firebase authentication, Google Identity Platform, or a similar product. The user's web browser gets an authentication token back. Then the user enters their question like, list the tickets I have booked. The web browser sends that request to the backend in an HTTP request. And the web browser also includes the auth token in that request? That's right. Now the application backend asks the LLM a question. It includes three things. The system prompt, the list of tools or APIs available, and the user's questions. The question does not include the user's auth token or user ID. I like that. Yes, that makes it safer. The LLM would respond with something like this. Call the tool list ticket. The application then sends the list ticket request with the auth token as the header to the retrieval service. The retrieval service verifies and decodes the auth token that comes with the request to get the user ID. It inserts that user ID into a predefined SQL query and sends it to the database. It then returns one database record for each of the user's tickets. But that's just database records. Uh, the user expects a human readable response, right? Right. The application passes the database records of the user's upcoming flights to the LLM. Then the LLM creates a nice human readable reply. The application returns that reply to the user. That looks great, Wenxin. But I have a few questions. Go ahead, Martin. In this architecture that you just showed us, does the LLM ever see any user auth tokens or user IDs? No, it doesn't. 
the auth token and user ID stay in the application and retrieval service. Got it. Can the LLM run queries in the database? Because I've heard that can be dangerous. No, the LLM can't run queries in the database. It only asks the application to call black box tool functions that perform authentication and execute predefined queries. I like that. This is a bit like regular API design. Even before LLMs, I often built APIs on top of my databases. It's a good design principle. Yes, LLMs are new, but many of the security patterns we use in the past are still useful. Every tier of software should have the minimum level of access it needs to do its job. Ah, the principle of least privilege still holds true. Now, uh, for me or anybody else who'd like to learn more and get our hands dirty with this, uh, how, how can we do that, Wenxin? My team published an example app. It's written in Python and it uses Cloud Run. You can download it from here. You can also read a blog post we wrote about it. Excellent. I will include those links in the video description. Thank you for showing us this, Wenxin. Now I know how my AI can access my database safely. Thanks for having me, Martin. And thank you, everyone, for watching. If you have any questions for Wenxin or me, please add them to the comments below. Also, let me know if there are any other serverless topics you'd like to hear about in future episodes. I read every single comment. Until next time.